Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me, all of you, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap for praise tonight. And you may be seated. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11, uh, verse 11 through 13. We were talking about graces given on Sunday, and uh, we got into dealing with this word on being content. We were talking about the things that Paul taught in the New Testament. And um, we left off where Paul taught that we are not to trust in money, but in God and to learn how to rejoice whether we were abasing or abounding. In other words, the key is to learn how to be content. And to, that's what we're going to talk about, the power of being content. All right. Now, a lot of people think that being content means to settle for. We're not talking about settling for anything. And the mistake you make when you think that content means to settle is that you settle for anything. And this is really, really important. So I thought I'd take tonight's Bible study and spend some time talking about what it really is. So let's start off with a definition of it. And I just want you to think through this as I take you through it tonight. Contentment is so important. And that's something that as Christian people, we have to get a hold of. So what is it? Contentment is, is about being satisfied and at ease while you are improving and getting better and progressing to the next level. It is about being satisfied and at ease while you are improving. See, we're gonna, we're gonna compare that with complacency. Complacency is satisfied and that's, they believe all you can do is, is just that far, but being content is being satisfied and at ease while you are improving, while you are getting better, while you are progressing to the next level. Complacency means refusing to work to improve or to grow in Christ. When you're complacent, you're there, you're satisfied, and you're not trying to grow, you're not trying to get better, you're not trying to do any of those things, okay? And so contentment is about you having a good attitude about where you are. Contentment is about having a good attitude about where you are while knowing you are on your way to another place. I got a good attitude about where I am while I know that I'm going to another place, while I know I'm going to another level. You're not, sad if you're not, you're not, going, you're not settling for where you are. Contentment doesn't mean to settle where you are. Contentment means I'm going to be satisfied because I'm going to another place. I'm going to another level. That complacent guy, he's refusing for any kind of improvement, and he just stays there. A guy in complacency settles, and I don't believe it's God's will for you to settle for, for where you are. You may not be where you want to be right now, but don't settle for where you are right now. Always know that there's another level, there's another place in God that God wants to take you, all right? So look at uh, Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13. He says, <clears throat> Paul says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Mm -hmm. All right, so he's at a place where I'm at this place, I've learned to be satisfied knowing that I'm going to the next level, knowing that I'm going to see improvement in my life, okay? I'm not settling for it just because I'm, I'm satisfied and at this place I am now. I'm satisfied because I know I'm going to another level. I can be cool with it. And look what he says. Therewith to be content, verse 12. He says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound or increase. Everywhere uh, and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Verse 13, he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So here's the point he's making. 
I can be in a, a, a high position or a low position, but the key is I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. He's content in knowing that uh, he can do and improve because of Jesus Christ. Now look at these three scriptures in the NLT. In the NLT. Because I'm going to show you, you know, is it really being content or is it being godly? <laughs> because true contentment is only found in Christ. That's what Paul found out, that true satisfaction with this deal of knowing I'm going to get better can only be found in Christ. Now look at this. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. All right, now, now, now think about that. I learned how to be content with whatever I have because I know I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So I'm not settling there. He says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation. That's, that's right. Learning, learning, learning the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty stomach, with plenty or with little. Learn how to live with every situation. Because what are you doing? You're saying no matter the situation, I am strengthened by Christ. Regardless of the situation, my improvement comes by, by Christ. And he says, I can do all, I can do everything through Christ. Watch this. Who gives me strength? That's the only reason I can be content in any situation because I know it's Christ that can give me strength. All right, now, this is so important. Uh, let's look at one more translation, the Amplified. Look, look, one more, uh, the Amplified. Uh, all right, he says in verse, verse 11, he says, not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I have learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. I know how to be abased and live humbly in straitened circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and to live in abundance. I've learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation. That's what I want to show you tonight, the secret of facing every situation. As Christians, you can't be in a bad situation and all of a sudden you don't know God no more. Or you be in a good situation and think you don't need God no more. You got to know the secret of being able to deal with every and any situation, whether you're well-fed or going hungry, having sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything, and I'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I can be content because I'm in his sufficiency. I, I love that. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency, praise the Lord. So I can be content. I can be, and I won't put my trust. See, when it's real good, I won't put, put my trust in it being real good. When I have, when my money looking right, I'm not going to put my trust in that. When it's not looking right, I'm not putting my trust in that. I'm putting my trust in the sufficiency that comes by Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why I can be content. All right, now, so self-sufficiency through Christ versus, versus self-satisfaction. You see, complacency is about self-satisfaction. We're not talking about self-satisfaction. We're talking about self-sufficiency in Christ. And so it doesn't say satisfied to the point where you don't want to change, but satisfied for now until God brings the change. God's going to bring the change. Wherever you are, if you're, in a, if you're in a rough situation right now, be content knowing God's bringing the change. It'll be all right. Sometimes you, you lay stuff down that you shouldn't lay down. Yeah, God told you to do it. You know he told you to do it. But you went through a stalk period. <laughs> and it didn't seem like that, that thing was ever going to grow. Don't lay it down. Be satisfied in knowing that God is bringing the change. Now, being content with life involves appreciating what you have and where you are in life. That's what it means. I'm, I'm content in my life. I, I, I am content and I appreciate what I have and I appreciate, you know, where I am in life rather than parking there with the attitude of complacency, parking there with this attitude that says this is good enough. 
no need to press for more, just wishing things were different. That's, that's, that's the wrong kind of attitude. Now, remember, Christian complacency says that no matter what happens, you are fully self-satisfied with your current personal efforts in pursuing Christ. You're satisfied with Christ. You're, this is pretty big time, but you're satisfied. How do I say this? Woo, try not to offend nobody. I don't care. You're, you're, you're the uh, Christian complacency says I'm satisfied with where I am as far as my growth is concerned. I'm satisfied where I am with my personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not. I'm not satisfied with where I am in Christ. I'm not satisfied with my personal relationship with Christ. I am pressing on. He was the one that asked us the question about how deep and how high and how wide. I want to continue. I want to go on that journey to find out how deep and how. And I may not find out until I get to heaven and might not find out then, but I am never going to be in this Christian complacency where, you know, uh, I've always done it like this. I'm going to continue to do it like this, and I don't plan on changing. I'm not doing that. Because that, that, what is that? You just stop growing. Your pursuit has, you, you, you're comfortable with, with your pursuit. I'm not, com there's so much more that God wants to show us. There's so much more that God wants to do for us. There's so much more. You haven't even reached the beginning of the call of God for your life, and you're complacent. Well, I'm good as long as I got two cars, a house, and a wife. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to be greedy and ask God for nothing else. Uh-uh. He the one said he's going to run me over with his blessings. I am going to pursue him. I am going to be in hot pursuit of him. I'm not, going to be, I'm not going to become complacent. I'm like, what else can we do, God? Are there other things in me that you can stir up that I don't know about right now? Stir it up right now. I want to keep going. I want to keep talking to you. I want to keep looking at that scripture that I've read a hundred times, and you show me something I've never seen before. I don't want to stay stuck on a 40-year revelation when God's got something that he wants to show me today because I took a hold of Christian complacency. I just speak for myself. You can do what you want to do. And at the end of the day, that's what I've learned. People do what they want to do anyway. I ain't fooling myself. I can preach and holler and you can shout and holler, but at the end of the day, when this service is over with, you're going to do what you want to do. You, you're going to be content or complacency. It's going to be your decision. You do what you want to do. I done said it. So when you get before the throne of God, you're not going to be able to stand in front of, of the throne of God and say, well, I didn't know that because I'm going to be right behind that big chair saying, use a lie. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Versus Christian contentment. And Christian contentment says, no matter what happens, you are fully satisfied in Jesus. I am fully satisfied in Jesus. All is well. Amen? So the truth of the matter is that we can only find true fulfillment and true contentment in Jesus Christ. That's the truth. You're not going to find true contentment in nothing else but Jesus. You're not going to find true contentment in your job. You're not going to find true contentment in your relationships. Uh, you, you're only going to find true contentment in Jesus Christ. Please listen to me when I say this. True biblical contentment is a conviction that Christ's power, Christ's purpose, and, and Christ's provision is sufficient for every circumstance in my life. That is true biblical contentment. It's a conviction that Christ's power, his purpose, his provision is sufficient. It's sufficient. His power is sufficient in my life. His purpose is sufficient in my life. His provision is sufficient in my life. And it's, and it's sufficient for every circumstance. I have to believe that. For every circumstance, he is my sufficiency. That's true contentment. Ain't no other kind of contentment. Don't come telling me you went to Bible school, and that's good to go to Bible school. Lord knows it's good to go to Bible school. It really is good to go to Bible school because we got a bunch of leaders that don't know how to read the Bible. It's good to go to Bible school. 
not cemetery school, but it's good to go to, go to Bible schools. You, you need to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. But I'm telling you, man, true contentment comes only with Jesus Christ. You, 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 can, I, you can search all day long, and you're not going to find true contentment outside of Jesus. And that's what the world's doing. They're, they're, we're li we live in a very discontented world. People are looking for true contentment in all, all the wrong places. You, you can't, it's, it's only in Jesus. Well, I don't believe in Jesus. Oh, well. That's the only place you can find it is in Jesus Christ. We are to learn how to walk through all kinds of adversaries, believing in and experiencing Christ's sufficiency. Now, it's, e it's even easy to say how content you are right now, but you got to learn how to walk. If I'm content, I've got to walk through all types of adversities in life. I've got to walk through all types of uh, uh, experiences in life, and I've got to believe that, that he's enough. I've got to believe that he's enough. You have to, listen, you, all of the things that you have ever gone through, all of the hurt, all of the pain, all of the betrayal, all of the lies, all of the distrust, whatever it is you've gone through, your contentment is found in Christ being enough. So you can, turn, you can turn to him. You feel bad, you turn to him. You hurt, you turn to him. Uh, you've been ripped off, you turn to him. You've been used, you turn to him. The problem is, is we're not turning to him anymore. We have replaced him with something else trying to be content in it. And it's not working. And I'm asking you to get back to being content in Christ and his sufficiency. Praise God. And his sufficiency, man. Some of y'all need to start back talking to yourself. Amen. The Bible says speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and in spiritual songs. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy when I said that. Ain't you crazy when you talk to yourself? That's the best time. And then when you talk to yourself, and then, and then you let God in on the conversation. Well, you know, I thought, nah, 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 nah. Lord, what you think about that? Well, you know, we, we talked about that yesterday. You forgot. No, I didn't forget. I just, I just didn't want to do it. See, you're going to be real honest with God. Well, if you don't want to do what I revealed to you, son, I mean, you know, I ain't nothing else I can say about it. You know, you know I love you. I say, I know you love me, but I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to do that. And then he'll say something like, that's your pride talking. Well, I, you know, all right, okay, well, that's my pride talking. I need you to help me out and get rid of the, the, that last bit of pride right there. He's saying, you ain't got no bit left. There's some more stuff you need to get rid of with that. <laughs> See, God will be straight with you. You got to trust in his sufficiency. He is a, he's, if you need a counselor, he is the sufficient counselor. He's enough. He's enough. And, and one thing I like about God, he'll say something to you one time. He ain't going to keep coming back talking to you about that. I remember when he said, I want you to be a student of grace, and I want you to never stop being a student of grace. And I said, Lord, could you say that to him again? He didn't say not one word back to me again. And, 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 and it's like, it's not like I didn't hear him the first time. It was like, I would need you to tell me so I, can, so I can feel like I'm more convinced in doing what you just said to me. God knows our hearts, and he weighs our hearts, amen. And our contentment must be in him. He must be enough. Say out loud that Christ is enough. I walk through all kinds of adversity, believing in and experiencing his sufficiency. His sufficiency. And, and somebody says, well, it's going to stop. No, it's not going to stop. That's what life is about. It's, it's about maturing you. You're mature, you're, you're you know, r really, when you go to heaven, that's your commencement. This is your dressing up room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you go to a funeral, somebody graduated. This is your dressing up room. And for some reason, we kind of want to live a life that doesn't require us to be visited by pressure. You keep going. You get you a good holies of holies group of friends, and y'all, you know, you pay them to cuss for you. <laughs> and you keep going. And they may need you to cuss for them one day. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> well, if not, I'm not saying that either, praise God. All right. We are to learn this. Look at 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, in the NLT and the Amplified. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 in the NLT and the Amplified. This is, this is amazing here. Uh, Philippians chapter 12, 
9 through 10, let's NLT and then Amplified. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. That's, that's the thing I'm learning. That's the thing I want to keep learning. That is the journey I want to stay on. I want to always remain on this journey of this. His grace is all I need. We keep thinking, and Cal and I were talking about this the other night, we keep thinking that we bring things to the table. You don't bring nothing. In this grace life, you don't bring nothing to the table. Everything that is at the table, it's at the table's fixed. It's prepared. Jesus has bought everything you need right there at the table. Yeah. Yeah. I believe somewhere along the line, that scripture where Jesus said, go get the, he invited these people to come and they kept making excuses about coming to the, to the dinner. And he said, go to the highways and the byways and get these folks and come to the dinner. And he said to them, they don't need to do nothing but come. Everything has been prepared. That was Jesus laying out a grace that was getting ready to show up, a grace that would be enough. He didn't ask you to bring nothing, but they made excuses. They made excuses. Well, I got to handle my cattle tonight. Well, my wife don't feel good tonight. He says, I'm just asking you to come to a table where everything has been settled. It's all been prepared. He said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. When you are weak, he says, his power works best in your weakness. But you got to see that. You got to engage that. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. I think the King James says, when I am weak, then, it, then I'm strong. All right, look at this in the, uh, what did I say? Amplified? I like this tent thing here. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. Uh, he said, but he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness is, and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. You know what God is saying? This grace, all right, you, you're saying, God, you don't know how hard this is. This is dangerous. He says, I know. My grace is still enough. Praise God. It's still enough. Glory be to God. It's still enough. Uh, uh, he says, it's enough for you. It's sufficient against any danger. It enables you to bear manfully. For my grace and strength are made <clears throat> uh, perfect, fulfilled, and complete, and show themselves most effective in your weaknesses. Therefore, I will, will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the strength and the power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch, watch this, that he may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. I don't know what you're going on, but God's still pitching tents over you. When you think you're by yourself, he has pitched a tent over you. And he's dwelling right there with you. Man, I saw that picture today that God's got a, a tent pitched over me, praise God. Look at verse 10 there. He will pitch a tent over you. So for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and, and take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in insults. I play, look at there. Now, I'm like, how do you do that? What are you talking about taking pleasures in insults? I want to cut somebody with insults. He says, no, my grace is enough for you to be insulted. I'm learning how to do that. I'm not walking around here like, like I'm there. I'm learning how to do that. Lord, take me on that journey and show me how to take pleasure in insults. You know how it was back up in the day. I want to fight, especially if they insult your mama. Your mama, oh, we're going to do it now with a butter knife. I'm going to have to cut you with the butter knife. He says his grace is sufficient. He says, and I will, I, I'm well pleased and I take pleasure, he says, because of his grace in infirmities, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in perplexities, in distresses. For when I am weak in human strength, then am I truly strong, able, powerful in divine strength. So what I don't have in human strength, I have in divine strength. Glory to God. What I don't have in the natural, I have in the supernatural. You think supernatural things happen when everything's going all right. But when you're saying, God, I am content in your grace, that's when God says, I will exchange my supernatural power for the inability you have right now 
Watch what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. I, I, I've, I've got to stay on that journey. I will not leave that journey. That is, that's something I, I've seen it in, before in my life, but I want to be proficient at it. I want to be uh, level-headed at it, but I want to be constant at it. I don't want to be, you know, every now and then. I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, you know, when you practice something and you practice it and you practice it, because you want it to immediately go into the automatic. You know, when somebody insults or does something wrong to you, I don't want to have to think about walking in love with them. Yeah. I, want it, I want automatic, it's an automatic move. I, I'm, I'm automatic going to walk in love with them. I don't want to think about praying. I want to automatically, you know, come out with a prayer. And I'm getting closer. You know, maybe I don't do it the first hour. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it before the end of the day most of the time now, and I'm getting closer and closer. That's my journey that I want to go on because I know that there's something so powerful. And then, you know, several times I've been able to do it immediately, but, and I saw the results. But, you know, this is so, God's good. He's enough. He's enough. He's enough, and I'm, I want to be content in Him. I'm trying to take the play out of church. I don't, I don't want to play church no more. I, I, want the, I want this stuff to be real, and I want it to be something you can see. I want you to experience an intimacy with God, that every one of us has an intimate relationship with God, not just a church relationship with God, not just a coming to the building relationship with God, not just turning on the stream relationship with God, but I want us to have a relationship with God where we know Him and he knows us, and in a time of hurt, pain, tragedy, lack, infirmities, insults, perplex, perpex, and that you have an intimacy with God that says, I'm in the automatic. Your grace is enough. I'm in the automatic. Your grace is enough. Okay, somebody says, well, well, what's that going to do? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe the first few times you say that, you might not see nothing manifest, but you got to stick with it. Stick with the journey. The grace is enough. Just stick with the journey. Stick with This is your growth right here. Just stick with it. Grace is enough. You feel like just breaking down crying. Grace is enough. Yes. It's enough. Doctor brings you another bad report. Grace is enough. Don't sit there and yield and just start hollering and screaming because panic comes in. Before you holler and scream, say grace is enough. enough. Well, don't say it now. Say it when you're hollering, before you're hollering and scream. <laughs> well, I guess y'all said, I'm going to say it now just in case I holler and scream. And I go, grace is enough. And then there's something that will happen in the human portion of your life where you wake up one day and you really believe it is. And then that, it'll be confirmed with peace. Yeah. That peace will be there and you're like, wow, grace really is enough. Grace really is enough. And you now... Engage a life of ease and peace because you know grace is enough. That's contentment. I'm going to engage in this life. It's going to be better. It's going to be all right. That's contentment. You're, you're going to be shocked of the things that you went through that hurt, how they were actually equipping you for doing more of the will of God in your life. You know, when you go work out or exercise and it hurts a little bit, but you get results out of it, yeah. like I said, you got to tear that muscle down in order to build it up if it's going to grow. Still, so don't be afraid of pressure. It's, it, it'll come. That's what God allows to happen to us so we can develop. There's a difference between development and growth. Growth, you just do it naturally, but development requires pressure. And in the middle of that development, we've got to learn contentment. You understand? You gotta, I'm trying to talk to you not from this perspective of, uh, uh, you know, a fable kind of perspective. I'm trying to talk to you from a, a reality. You have to go on this journey. This is not happening overnight. But as you begin to practice in this and exercise in this and, and uh, see where you fall short and continue to, pull on that intimacy you have with God, 
that thing's going to click one day. And when it does, you, you're going to be like, wow. People are going to look at you, well, why aren't you breaking down? Oh, I'm content. Why? I'm, I'm in his sufficiency. I am self-sufficient in God's sufficiency. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to choose to rest on God's promises despite what we may be going, going through in our lives. That's contentment. That's contentment that will not be complacent in the midst of circumstances. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. And this is, this is, uh, this is something I think will be a blessing to you. 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6 through 8. I'm, I'm thinking the whole week, as soon as church was over with, I was thinking about Wednesday night. And I told Taffy, driving home, I'm like, Wednesday night, I want to teach on contentment. I said, because a lot of people think it means to settle there and say, oh, well, I'm just a poor little old Christian, and I just got to settle with just being poor and broke and hurt and, and lonely all my life. I'm telling you, you ain't got to settle for nothing because you have Jesus. You have the true source of contentment. If there's any group of people on the planet that ain't got to settle for nothing, it would be you. No, you ain't got to settle. Don't settle. I mean, don't settle for nothing. Don't settle for a job. Well, you know, they said I was supposed to have this degree, so I guess I have to just settle doing that. You ain't got to settle for nothing. Honey, the favor of God will come over that manager, and without a degree, he'll say you're the best person for this job. You don't have to settle for anything. Don't settle for mates. Don't settle for, you know, you know, you, you know well, I, I'm getting old, so I might as well go and marry old Harry. You ain't got to marry old Harry. You ain't got to marry old Harry. Yeah, you can marry old young Rodolfo if you want to. You ain't got to marry Harry. Don't settle. There's some young men that like older women. They, they like doing that cougar walk, you know? Don't settle. You ain't got to settle for nothing. Say it out loud. I don't settle for nothing. I am content in Jesus. He is my sufficiency. Yeah. All right, look at verse 6. Interesting. Read this scripture for years. Interesting. But godliness with contentment is great gain. That's interesting because godliness with contentment, we now know you can't have contentment without God. So in just a moment, I'm just going to deal with godliness is great gain. Because when you have godliness and your contentment is there, I see what the scripture is saying, but I never thought about it like that. Look at verse 7. He said, for we brought nothing into this world. That is so awesome. I don't know. I don't understand. We brought nothing to this world, and under this grace, we bring nothing to this grace table. Uh. <laughs> Why do we always think that, you know, I got to do this in order for God to do that. You don't bring nothing to this table. And if I don't do that, then God ain't going to do that. You ain't bringing nothing to this table. The grace life is a yielded life. It's a life where you're just yielding to the finished works of Jesus Christ. That's what the grace life is. The grace life is finding out what Jesus has done, believing it, and yield to it. You, you still think you're bringing something to the table. You, you still think you're running something. My wife used to tell my girls that, you, you ain't running nothing. And then she said, I'm running stuff. I'm grown. <laughs> well, I don't see why we got to do what you say. Because I'm grown. <laughs> you don't tell me, I tell you. We still think we, we can tell God. Well, Lord, if I don't go over there and do that, they'll never change. God said, I, was, I, 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 had, I, I know the date where they're going to change. Who are you? I just allowed you to do a little watering and a little planting. And now you think you can bring the increase. You don't bring the increase to the table. The increase was at the table. When you got there, the increase was at the table. That's what I'm learning. I'm learning how to disconnect my self-effort 
for all of what Jesus has already done and learning how to yield to it and say, you go first and I follow you. That's what it means to yield. He says, for we brought nothing into this world. Isn't that right? <laughs> and it is certain. He said, there's one thing I know. You didn't bring nothing in the world, and I know you ain't going to take nothing out. <laughs> but think about it. You didn't bring nothing in. And you ain't bringing, taking nothing out. Next verse. And having food and raiment and clothes, let us be there with what? Content. Content. So let me put this thought in your mind. Let me introduce something to you right now. Godliness produces great gain. I've come to realize that our world lives in a constant state of discontentment. Think about what I just said. That our world today that we're living in, it lives in a constant state of discontentment. People not happy with their marriage. They're not happy with their wife. They're not happy with their husband. They're not happy with their children. It's amazing. I'm not, you know, well, well, why are you getting divorced? I don't know. I just, I ain't feeling it no more. I just, I, I'm just not happy. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just, I, I got to live. I just. <laughs> That's discontentment. That's dis instead of doing what's necessary to, to make it happen, you know. You're discontent with your children. You're not happy with leaders. That's so funny. You know, come to church all excited. Oh, man, I love world changes. Oh, I love Pastor da 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 And I say something, and like, oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's just discontentment. You know, instead of being content that it'll get better with the church, it'll get better with people, it'll get better with your leaders. You think that by continuing to switch and going different places, you're going to... You're not happy with things that you have. Your house is too small. The TV's outdated. <laughs> the cell phone doesn't have 5G. <laughs> We're discontented in a lot of areas. And we wake up every morning and we go out into a world and a group of people that are discontent. Now, it would be cool if I could say that discontentment was only in the world. What is just freaking me out is that most of the stuff I see in the world has found its place amongst Christian people and we don't, we don't, we can't even see it. Well, not we, but we just, it's like, do you, do you realize worldliness plus Christianity equals a fig tree with no figs? <laughs> you remember when Jesus saw that fig tree? He, it had leaves on it. It was supposed to have figs on it, but it had leaves on it. That's the way most, a lot of Christian people are. Oh, I don't have a real deal, but look at my leaves. Look at my leaves. I'm awesome. Look at my leaves. Look at my leaves. I got a title, apostle. Look at my leaves. I've got a title, prophet. Look at my leaves. But where's the figs? You a prophet? Prophesy! Where are the leaves? You an apostle? Build something that doesn't exist and take hell for it. See, we love showing off our leaves. Look at my title and look at my talent and listen to all the scriptures I learned. Leaves, 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 but no fruit. That's a nice way of saying it's hypocrisy. Yeah? And so... How do you find contentment in such a restless world? Well, you yield to Jesus, the only real source of contentment. How do I find it? In Jesus. 
We don't believe in Jesus. Houston, we have a problem. That's how you do it. You have to keep going back to him. When it's getting that crazy around you in your life, that's when you're like, I, I need to turn TV off. I need to disconnect from certain conversations. I got I to gotta focus on my contentment being in Jesus. Oh, my prayer time this morning, I just started off thanking God for everything. I started from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. That's where my contentment is. That's where I can take a deep breath and say, yeah, it's good. We're gonna, it's all right. And you just keep moving. Because if you don't, discontentment can make you sick. You hear me? Are you listening to me? So many of us are trying to fill a void of some kind in our lives, and unfortunately, we try to fill that void with things that can't really satisfy. And that's happened for a long time. We look to fill the void with possessions or money, but we only end up wanting more because nothing's getting the job done. We try to fulfill it with relationships, sex, but we end up feeling even more empty and depressed than when we first started. The hunt for the thing that satisfied. And today your hunt is over. Jesus satisfies. He doesn't fail to do that. He satisfies. And so when those things become the end goal and the reason for our being, we end up being discontent because those things were never meant to fulfill us. Only Jesus can do that. Those other things can't do it. Only Jesus can do that. So next Wednesday, we're going to take some time and we're going to look at some scriptures on contentment. And I'm going to show you the dangers that can happen if you don't resolve this issue. We have to become Christians who have settled that I'm sufficient in his sufficiency. If you're going to settle for something, settle for Jesus. Settle for Jesus. I'll always be all right with him. Father, we thank you for this time tonight. And I pray this message has found its place in the heart of these precious people. I thank you, Lord, that we're, we're just, we rebel against complacency. And we will not settle into discontentment. And so, Father, we thank you that tonight as we, some start this journey or for others continue this journey, that contentment will be our goal and that we may say in the middle of all types of situations, grace is enough. All I need, that grace is enough. Jesus, that's who you are. And so blessings be upon us as we continue to walk this victorious journey. And Father, we depend on you. We can't, we can't do it without you, but with you, we can do all things, and we can have the contentment that brings us great gain. So our godliness and our trust in you is where that gain comes from. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. You get anything out of it tonight? Praise God. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, if you're here with us tonight, either here in the chapel or if you're watching over the stream, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to take the opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation with you. If you'll join me in this prayer, I want to lead you to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of my sins. I receive the free gift of forgiveness. Dear Jesus, I need you in my life. I need a savior. Come into my heart. I believe in you and I receive you now as my Lord and personal savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, just text the key word if you're watching over the stream, the key word, I, I'm saved, that's one word. You can text it to 51555. 
provide your name and email address and we'll send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. And welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's our final act of worship. It's something that I hope you are getting used to because you are going to see some amazing, amazing things happen in your life as you start to develop a relationship with God where you're doing things out of a willing heart and a willing mind. Not just in your giving, but everything, that your intimacy level is just increasing where God is concerned. So as you prepare your offerings, you give as God has blessed you. You give in proportion to how God has blessed you. You give from a want to heart and not a not want to heart, you know? And you allow God to govern your giving. And this is a worship to him. You're worshiping God with your gifts. Uh, giving is an, an act of worship to him. I can't wait till we start talking about that. We're close to that. It's an act of worship and God receives it. And that's one of the most powerful things you can do is to worship God with your gifts. And so, uh, you gonna do it tonight? All right, so, come on up and receive that offering. I'm gone, if you need me, don't call. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, for those of you who are here, if you are ready to uh, give, if you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hand so the ushers can minister to you. For those of you who are online or here and you want to give by text, you can follow the information um, on the screen. Um, we are just so excited about taking advantage of this opportunity to show Christ we depend on you. Listen. Lord, for everything in this life, we depend on you. All right? Ushers, are we good? We're going to go ahead and collect that. And after that, we are going to stand for the final blessing and be dismissed. Aren't y'all excited about that word? Listen, y'all take this word home and meditate on it when you win your car. Because the enemy going to try you. He going to try and see if you really about what you just heard. So he going to see if you really going to rely and rest in Christ's sufficiency. So just be ready. Be like, come on. Bring what you can. Put them up. I'm ready. I got it. I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. It's a beautiful thing. All right. I think we're good. All right, everyone, stand to your feet. Today is a good day. If you have not been resting in Christ's efficiency, today is a good day to start. So this is what we're going to do. Y'all know I like talking to the neighbors, okay? So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. You can say this at home, too. Neighbor. Oh neighbor, oh, neighbor, if you don't remember nothing on this wonderful Wednesday, make sure you understand you going to be good because you good in Christ's sufficiency. All right. Father God, we thank you, Lord, so much for this night. We thank you, Lord, for the understanding, for the word that went forth. We declare that this week, the remainder of this week, is full of us practicing and walking in this journey of resting in your sufficiency. I declare that the Holy Spirit will help us, give us the strength, Father, so that when different challenges and, and, and we're slandered on and all those type of things come up against us, when challenges come, we know our default will begin to be to rest in your sufficiency. We declare that now in Jesus' name. I declare that world changers rest in Christ's sufficiency. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're blessed. Have a good night. You asked and we answered. We know there are friends of the ministry who prefer CDs and DVDs. But for those of you who find the digital versions of messages better fit your life, Creflo and Taffy Dollar's message series are now available as digital downloads in the CYWE store. Log on to CYWEstore.com today to see the whole catalog of new and re-release messages that can be downloaded to any device for easy and convenient listening.